Overall, I'm Amos the Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show right here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go under newsletters. You're going to see the opening call on the left-hand side. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get a six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%, and you can get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Basil has approximately 10 to 12 great archives out there. You want a great education? Sign up. Check it out. You get it for a whole month. Check out the education. Do a lot of studying, and you're going to be off to the races. Basil Chapman, how you doing? I'm doing well, Tom. How are you? It's, well, it's, it's so beautiful down here, Basil. It's insane today. It's like 76 degrees and cool. Yeah. So it's like... We, we yeah. have a quite a nice day for us. It's well, up in the 50s, but uh, it's not quite 70s. But I'm no, just, uh, but after that's we huge. And you, you know, it's amazing, it folks. What happens is this. The way the East Coast works, and even when I was saying it's 76, because that's warm for us now, that I can always tell that it's warm in Boston when that happens, Basil. Isn't that wild? Because right. it's... Yeah, I mean, if you get 50, we'll get 76. It's from you get 40, you know, it right. doesn't get down to 50, but we'll get 60, 65 or something. Do you know what I mean? So pretty wild. Talking about south to the north, oh, look at this. This is very interesting. Look at the Dow from the south. That's from 32,948, the low that was made uh, in January. We've gone to, you know, in the chapter, we've been always looking for four higher peaks, alphabetized A, then peak B, then C is the higher one, then peak D, that's where other things can happen. But at that last high that was made at 34,342 on, I think it was about the 17th of uh, uh, January, pulled back quite sharply to the 32,948, just above the 200 period moving average. And then we had a really nice ruddy peak, A peak, B peak, C, and then we stalled underneath, just a little underneath the, the last high. And within this uh, technique that I use, which shows a large rectangle formation, let me just show you this, if I can show it from the, for a moment, I won't be able to find it. Let's see if I can find it. No, I haven't got it. So um, I'm always looking at the rectangles. Either it's a narrow, long rectangle or it's a wide rectangle. And each one has a connotation. A long rectangle can last a lot longer than your patience as it goes, bounces between the high of the horizontal line and the low of the horizontal line at the bottom. It just bounces around. So what's interesting, when it's wide, there's often a very strong rally that makes higher highs and higher lows. Then the rule of thumb for me is that it should go to a peak D, a fourth highest peak, yeah. under, underneath the previous high, just under, right on or just above the previous high. Well, the last one went to a peak C, 34,342 was the high of the, uh, seventh, uh, the 13th, and on the uh, 13th of January, on the 1st of February, it went to... Uh, 34,334. That's why that's uh, eight points lower. Then it pulled back. But look at the way in this daily chart, the nine period moving average is holding nicely above. That's the green line above the 14. And uh, the MACD is not great, but it's good. Stochastic is uh, under 80 percent. But the the technicals are just strong enough. I, I've been waiting for three days now, maybe it's four days. We've been trying to add to our three times long down position, which we have. We have the core position, the diamonds. We also have the core position still from the low of March 23rd of, uh, actually it was, the, yeah, 23rd of 2020. But what's really important about this is that we've just been waiting patiently. And today we got it by a few cents on the slide earlier on. Nice. That, that position is up about 4%. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is that it has to hold. Because I've been saying that for the last about, I'd say from the end of last week, I was, I was saying, I think we're in for a little bit of a consolidation here and how all these different indexes hold. Because just like I've been talking about gold as gold, silver sometimes needs gold, then gold looks around and says, hey, what's happening? And then suddenly races up, tries to catch silver, at which time silver takes a breather. And then when gold finally catches up, they both take a breather. So I've been talking about that. The, the Dow for months has been my leading indicator, the Dow, the, the Dow itself, the DIA. And uh, all of a sudden, with that Goldman Sachs and Travelers smashed to the downside somewhere around the 17th or so of uh, January, 
that really took a beat. That that took the Dow lower. So the Dow then started to fail. But all of a sudden, you got the Nasdaq coming on strong. Now you got the S and P and the IWM Russell 2000. And all of a sudden, I said last week, I think what we're looking at is this coming week. That's this week that we're in. The Dow should hold a little better now than the others. So it's a little lopsided, and I still think this is a big. Uh, this is a basically a shorter term consolidation. But I need to see the Dow hold the gains probably into the close. At least do a big chunk of the gain should be held. And by the Friday, at the Friday's close, I want to see the Dow. It doesn't have to close above, but it needs to get it above the 34,334 high that was made five sessions ago. And to me, that'll say, great. Now you can look at the weekly chart, which I've been saying is in a consolidation pattern. You can see this big rectangle here. And all, all I'm looking at is that in that huge move up that we saw in January, there's a lot of consolidation that's going on. And it's giving us room to put money to work in certain sectors, certain stocks. In fact, today we saw one of the sectors that I've been looking at waiting, waiting uh, to see if it can finally show strength. It hasn't really shown strength for a year now, but I think it's starting to. So each one of these sectors that have been beaten down that are showing this rotational correction, strength or weakness, that's what I'm focusing on. So we're looking at the Dow. Dow, if it takes out today's low in the next couple of days, that's really bad, but in the meantime, on a short-term basis. But that rectangle in the weekly chart says, hey, we can stay in this range a lot longer than your patience, and we're going to be watching this very closely. But I do like the action today. We waited patiently. We got it. And now at least we can raise the stop so that we don't have to take a lot. This is a trading position because we have other positions as well. But this is one that I wanted for this potential leg D to the upside. Yeah, there's no doubt we've had some good volatility out here today, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, and as we're talking, folks, okay, we were talking about that, you know, that test. Well, check this out. So it's coming. But you, now you have five more minutes on this bar, folks, in Basel, you know, but it's going to be intriguing. So the first test when I came on had 50,000 contracts. Well, right now you have five minutes into it and you only have 16,000 contracts. So... This is always going to get intriguing. I love these wide consolidations, Basil. Do you know what I yes. mean? It's pretty yes. cool, actually. You know, those big rectangles. Because this is a monster rectangle, as you said, man. Well, I mean, it's and huge. Look at this, fi this five-minute chart just made this huge rectangle formation. And uh, you know what's interesting? I mean, I, I was lucky. I, I managed to catch the bottom in this E-mini. And then I got out at the 200-period uh, moving average resistance in this five-minute chart. And look how much further I didn't have a chance to get back in. And look at this. It's now at 41.65. We went to a peak E, and the nine period in the five-minute chart is still above the 14-period moving average. And what I'm showing here is that every single one of these techniques that I'm talking about in this one- or five-minute chart applies equally to a monthly because it's a fractal of human nature. It's just yeah. looking at price. Like, you look at volume, I look at these different things, and it repeats over and over. It's really fascinating, isn't it? I love it. It is so true, Vessel. It's, it's think, so true. I think that's what keeps us going. I, I'm telling I mean, you, we're, we're twins. I know, man. It's, it's unreal. A it's, a, it's a mental challenge. It keeps you young. I love it. It's that's really awesome. nice. Listen, folks, come <laughs> over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters. You see the opening call right on the right-hand side. Baz, up a great one. Safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. You too, Tom. Thank Have you. Stay evening. right there, folks. We'll come right if back. You want to take advantage.